Hey guys, has your mom or dad or whoever you live with ever asked you to take out the trash? And then you take out the trash, you come back and then you gotta put a garbage bag back into the garbage. And as you're sitting there and you're putting the bag in the garbage, you're saying to yourself, maybe it's raining, man, there's nothing to do today, right? You're bored? Well, actually, check this out. Because you can actually take a plastic bag, right? And the beauty about science is how we could take things and reuse them, okay? And instead of just throwing them out, maybe before you put the bag, into the garbage, we could transform this bag into something really, really cool and amazing. And I'm actually not gonna tell you what we're making yet. I'm just gonna go through the process, build it, and then see if you guys can make a cool prediction. Remember, predictions are educated guesses, and you can figure out what we're doing. Now, a regular garbage bag. I'm gonna open it up so that it's a nice, cool square, okay? And I'm gonna take string. Now, if you don't have string, you have an old pair of shoes, you could use shoelaces, you could use anything you want. But you want to make sure that you have four pieces of identical size string. The length doesn't really matter, but they have to be exactly the same. So I cut out already pre-cut four pieces of string. Now I'm going to take four pieces of tape. One, two. I think it's cool if you have them pre-cut. It just makes the experiment flow faster. So now I cut four pieces of tape. And what I'm going to do is take string one. Now. Obviously, this is a square. Squares have four corners. So what I do in corner one, I'm gonna do in corner two, three, and four exactly the same. So the length of the piece that I'm putting here, I need to make sure I do there. So I'm gonna take tape one, tape one, string one, corner one. I'm gonna maybe about an inch. I'm gonna hold it down. And it's so important that when you take your tape, that you really press that tape down, okay? You don't want this string falling because we're gonna make something really, really cool. And I'll give you a little clue. It's gonna fall through the air, okay? And you don't want it falling apart as it's falling through the air. Same exact thing, corner two. Same size piece of string. Remember, you wanna control your variables. You wanna keep everything the same. Here, this goes to corner two. Same thing, tape. Press it down really, really tight. And I'm just gonna repeat the same thing four times, okay? Now, I think this is actually the hardest part for those of you who don't know how to make knots yet. But you know what, you're gonna learn, okay? Take string one, bring it to the center. String two comes to the center, and remember, you don't want it to be different, exactly the same. String three will meet string two. It's like a meeting of the strings, okay? And string four is gonna meet string three. And now as I take this, I'm just gonna show you something really cool. Before I make my knot, I'm just gonna kinda take this, I'm gonna start to move it into the air. And you're gonna notice, okay? See, it's so hard to see, to think about air because, well, it's invisible, but air does take up space. And as you notice, okay, what is it starting to look like? Really cool parachute, right? You see, I created something that's extremely slow moving because this bag grabs the air and I made a parachute, right? Now, the part of the parachute that's actually grabbing the air is called the canopy. Now that's the part that's gonna be falling through the air. And as it's falling through the air, it's gotta have all that air move out of the way. So what happens to your parachute? When it's moving the air out of the way, it moves extremely slowly. The bigger the canopy, will it move faster or slower? It's gonna move slower. The smaller the canopy, does it have more air or less air? Less air, so it's gonna move a little faster. But now watch. Let's test this by adding a weight to it, okay? I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna make a knot. Now, for fun, I have a challenge, okay? And I don't know if this parachute's gonna work, but you see my egg? We're gonna name the egg Fred, okay? And I'm gonna take Fred, and I'm gonna tie him or tape him to the parachute. If you wanted to, you could draw uh, a face on Fred because we don't know what's about to happen to Mr. Fred. So you can make him look like ooh, or make him look happy or make him look sad because he doesn't want to do this. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take the tape and tape it around Fred. And now I actually have a working parachute. Now the cool part about this is when your parachute's done, if you have a backyard at home, or if your mom or dad or whomever you live with wants to take you to the park, you could go to the jungle gym and get to a higher surface, okay? And you spread out the canopy. And when I release this, the cool part about this is you have, this is your challenge. Can you guys create at home 
a parachute that will move slow enough through the air and be extremely air resistant that will make Fred the egg land safely. Well, did mine work? I don't know. So what I did was I'm gonna make a prediction and I'm gonna say, yes, it will work. And now I'm gonna test my prediction by doing it. Should we do it? Let's try it. And now I'm gonna pick up the bag. I'm gonna observe Mr. Fred. And Mr. Fred is not dead. There's not a crack. You see, I made an air resistant moving device that flows extremely slow through the air. And look, not a scratch on Mr. Fred. And that's my parachute. Thank you.